Okay guys, we're doing a bit of lining today. This is thousand grade lining, which is generally the one we use. It's not too coarse, not too thin, because what we're gonna do is, see this wall's been plastered, and some of these walls were not in the greatest condition. So when we've cross lined the walls, which is obviously horizontally, you won't be able to tell the difference between a new plastered wall and a cross line wall. And then you can either paint it, or you can paper on the top of it because obviously we've done it horizontally the paper will be hung vertically so you don't get any mismatch on the joints anyway i've cut a couple of pieces here i'm just going to go show you a couple of quick tips on doing a bit of lining paper we will be doing a room cross lining a room a full room and then we'll give you a clue on how you can go about doing a full room but today we're just going to show you a few little tips on one pasting it and secondly a couple of the tools and, the, and techniques that we're going to use Right, I'm just going to measure the bit that's got to go in these corners now because we've done the full length there, now we've just got to do the infills. You can see like it's like 123, 124. If we do two, 140, which amazingly, look at that. There's two, 140, and they're the two that's going to go up there. What we'll do now, I'm going to show you a little tip on pacing them. Make sure the paper is overlapped there. The bottom one is further out like that. Put it to the edge right on the edge like that. And you don't need to use a brush, which I used to use when I was a young lad. You can use the roller. But you use the roller in a clever way. You just brush away from the edges. So basically I've just rolled it with my roller and I've just gone off the edges with it, going that way, away from the edge each time. Make sure it's a nice even coat, as you can probably see it is. Then we do a little fold there, drag that one in there, another little fold there, and that will be ready to hang. Got to wait for it to be supple, leave it three or four minutes because you can just feel that's not right at the moment. So we'll put that down there, onto the next one. When you're down to one piece, just stick it on the edge. Roll away from the edge, like that. Move it over, down to the bottom, like that. Off the edges again, like that. And just to make sure it's nice and even. Like that. Hold that like that. Now this one has to be cut. So we'll just leave that like that for a second. Now if I remember rightly, Roy said 13. So here's another little tip. You don't want to be writing on there or anything. You can just put it on that edge there like that, so it's even. Get 13 on the tape measure. Put your finger, see how my finger sits right on the 13 line. And that straight edge there, watch. So it's against that edge. Then the tape measure, just press down onto the paper and you'll get an indentation like that and that'll be 13. Cut along that line now, like that and that is how you trim your paper. Easy as that. Be vigilant and every now and again get the sponge and water and wipe the paste table edges but you shouldn't have too much. If you're doing it like this you shouldn't get too much paste dragging over the edges. We shouldn't get any. But pasting used to be the biggest pain of papering, didn't it, Roy? Yes. But now, doing it this way, you see as I've folded them over like that, there's hardly any paste showing so it can't dry out. You see that grey, looks like a scraper, that's called a corking board. And he uses that to spread it out and it serves as two purposes. One, to flatten out the paper. And secondly, he uses the straight edge and the internals to cut it into the internal. You don't use a brush, don't use a brush anymore. Now watch this now, look, the little trick of this, look. Nice sharp blade, puts it in the corner. One, two, three, four nice little cuts. Rips that off, chucks the waste on the floor, because the Muppet here picks it up. <laughs> Good little tip with the off cuts, when you cut them off, see so you got the paste that side, just fold them in half before you put them on the floor because then you don't get the, you don't drop onto the floor with the paste. What he's doing now is using his clip putty knife to score where the last paper ended 
and the paper that's overlapped. And then he'll put his corking board on there again, line it up, then he'll cut through. Now don't you make that look easy? Really easy. If Roy can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> there you go. And then you've got sponge and water, and then he sponges the edges off to take off any residue paste, because we don't want that on there. With the sponge and water, you always wipe the joints. You see like these, we always wipe them joints. This, we've done this one earlier. It's not quite dried out, but as you can see, you can hardly see the joints. In fact, when we've painted this, it'll look like it's been plastered. You won't even see any of the joints. We won't need to put filler in them. If you've enjoyed the video, you can like, comment, and subscribe below. My name's Chris. You've been watching Build With a &E.